Dale Zartman here with Rescue Methods. Uh, we're in Batavia, Ohio, doing a Swift Water Ops and Watercraft Tech course with uh, Central Joint Fire District, as well as some other neighboring departments. We have uh, students up motorcrafting today, and then we've got another group of students that are getting ready to do a tension diagonal. They're gonna utilize this tension diagonal today uh, to mimic mass evacuation. So the scenario is uh, when you have people who cross rivers or get into uh, intermittent islands and they're out in the body of the water and then the river value changes um, unpredictably or quickly. Then you end up with victims that are stranded out on the islands and we need quick, uh, effective and efficient ways to get to them and get them back across the river. This is a non-motorized approach. So what the students are gonna do is they are gonna ferry a line across using paddling techniques in a boat. Once they get to the far side, they're gonna anchor that rope. Um, on the near side, they're gonna take that rope back and they're going to tension it using a CMC clutch and a three to one mechanical advantage system. Once that line is tensioned, then the rescuers on the far side are just gonna simply throw grab handles onto the track line. They're going to hold on to the victims. They're gonna set a proper ferry angle and then they're just gonna ride the line back across to the receiving side. Very quick, efficient way to get victims from point A to point B. When they're done with that, then they're gonna move into a dynamic ferry operation in the craft where they're gonna use the, the uh, paddle boat to bring the victims back across the water. So I'm gonna flip the screen around here and we're gonna just talk through and watch this evolution as it goes from start to finish. All right, so our paddle crew is getting ready to initiate this sequence. Uh, four paddlers, uh, we're big advocates of horsepower. So we're gonna have a rope manager that's in the middle of the craft. You don't want them in the bow or in the stern because um, that's gonna affect the ferry angle on the boat. It's either gonna pull the bow uh, one direction or the other or pull the back end of the boat one direction or the other if you're playing out of the back end. So center mass is where we put the rope bag. We do not attach a knot to the boat because any fixed point going to the end of the boat, as you try to hold the line on this side and keep it up out of the water, that's gonna constantly fight and resist your paddlers. So this allows the boat crew to completely control the tension on the line. Um, when they need to blow out rope, they can choose to blow out rope so that they can make the paddle sequence. Make sure you pick a section rope that is longer than the direct line you're trying to establish because you have to position yourselves up river to initiate this. So they're probably, I don't know, 50 feet up river maybe from their objective. They're gonna set a good ferry angle and they're gonna paddle hard across. And then they got one tender here who's gonna elevate the line and keep it out of the water. So here they go. They're in, everybody's positioned with paddles. We've got a good ferry angle and across they go. Play out rope, play out rope. Paddle hard, paddle hard, play out rope. Good, once they get to that far side, inside boater jumps out and anchors the boat. As soon as they're anchored, they have to on the far side very quickly jump out with the rope bag and just friction wrap a tree and then work down to their anchor. You can see the near guys are body anchoring the line. If you're doing a big long stretch and you assume that the rope is gonna end up in the water, it is a good practice to have the line pre-rigged into some kind of capturing device. Whether that's a paired prusix, whether that's a, a clutch, an ID, an MPD, a maestro, whatever devices you're using. Good, and as soon as you guys get a friction wrap on a tree, then these guys are gonna move. Okay, you guys can go ahead and start working down river now. Pass in front of the trees as you're working your way down the bank so that the rope doesn't encounter any obstructions. Good, are you guys gonna need more line? So tell them you're gonna need more line. Hey, Dad, give me 20 feet.
We're good, thanks. And then on this end, you do not need a big tail to get initiated because you can start with a very, very small three to one um, and then just keep growing that three to one with all your resets. So they've got a clutch rigged in here. We're using G11 Lifeline. And they're gonna drop in their device. So you start use, with use the tension part. side. You, you use side, right? Yep. And I'll give you a little fun. So now the clutch is rigged and they're gonna put in their three to one mechanical advantage and tension the lineup. Okay, so there's the three to one rig. They've used a Petzl rescue sender uh, with a Omni pulley. Now they have one rescuer and one rescuer only is gonna tension the three to one. Tensioning! We don't wanna exceed one rescuer on the tensioning because we can over tension the line. So it's just one rescuer on a three to one mechanical advantage. When it comes to height on these, you want your anchoring elements to be rigged at about chest height um, so that the handles and the elements hanging off of the track line are not in the current. If they're in the current, any handles that you rig in there that you float on the line uh, will just relocate back here to the downriver side. You set this tension diagonal up at a minimum of 45 degrees to the current. So this is not a line that runs perpendicular across the water for mass evacuations like this. Uh, you want to enable your rescuers to just drop in on the handle, set a good ferry angle, and ride this all the way down. So we've got a, a little bit stouter than 45 degrees, which should make it a little bit easier to ride. Once that's compressed, then we'll go ahead and put the clutch in the stop position, and we will collapse the rescue cinder. Good. Take your control handle and rotate it all the way down now. There you go. Okay, did you give it all you could get with the three to one? You feel good on it? I, I do. Okay, all right, tell them you're ready. Ready. So now this is gonna be a rescuer victim swim. So a rescuer is going to throw a carabiner and a prosic or an extended handle of some type on the far side around the track line or onto the track line. He's gonna hold on to the prosic just simply as a handle. He's gonna extend the victim in front of them and then lock into the victim with leg locks, um, PFD grabs, or under the arm grabs. It is important if you are riding towards river right that you are holding on to the track line handle with your left hand. And you wanna extend your left hand and drift down underneath the system. Extend your left arm. There you go. Good, and he's got a nice, nice body angle to the current now, which is just gonna help propel him all the way across the zip line and let him and the victim ride right into the receiving point. If you have too much slack on your track line, it's not tension enough, you can end up with a vector out in the middle of the water um, because of the angle on the di tension diagonals, it usually ends up being pretty close to the shore where you can reach or throw. Um, but this is a, a nice tight track and the victims come right into the shore. Well done. Next rescuer and victim, come. Well done. Okay, so now the rescuers are going to bring back their paddle craft to their final rescuer. So they've played out slack on the clutch. They've released their anchoring uh, attachment on the far side. And now what they're gonna do is take that track line and connect it to the left corner of the, of the paddle boat. The bag of rope is gonna go back into the boat. So you don't need to work at the tails. You can have excess rope, just manage it properly. So bags in the boat. Midline knot, gonna connect to that left corner of the boat so that when we pull, it sets a ferry angle coming to river right. Rescuer's in, and as he starts to drift down, uh, they're gonna pull through the clutch. Rope back, brother. Rope back. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Good. Okay, so now the rescuers are going to bring back their paddle craft to their final rescuer. So they've played out slack on the clutch. 
they've released their anchoring uh, attachment on the far side. And now what they're gonna do is take that track line and connect it to the left corner of the, of the paddle boat. The bag of rope is gonna go back into the boat. So you don't need to work at the tails. You can have excess rope, just manage it properly. So bags in the boat, midline knot, gonna connect that left corner of the boat so that when we pull, it sets a ferry angle coming to river right. Rescuers in, and as he starts to drift down, uh, they're gonna pull through the clutch. Rope bag, brother, rope bag. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Good. So this is called a dynamic ferry in which they've made two connections to the boat, uh, just two sections of webbing, one long at the back end of the boat, one short at the front of the boat. And uh, you can pull on those straps to adjust ferry angle and then you can just dynamically ferry right across. You wanna make sure that as rescuers and victims, you load the down river sponson on the boats um, so that you can glide easily, pick up that up river side and just navigate right across the line. Very, very easy way to pull a lot of people across as well, especially if you don't wanna get wet and go swimming. All right, so to ferry back up river on this line, um, you're putting in two ferry, ferry control lines or two sections of webbing that go from the up river side of the boat so that it's moving parallel across the line. And then we throw in two handle ascenders, two rescuers load on the downriver sponson. And then they just gotta work together. Uh, pull, there you go. They gotta work together to make sure they're pulling at about the same times. And they just pull in advance, pull in advance. Good, and they're just gonna work their way upriver. So that's how you negotiate when you're moving against the current on your ferries.